Hi, I'm Jeffrey. Welcome back to Nightfalls. Come, settle in for tonight's calming meditation and soothing bedtime story. As always, don't worry if you fall asleep before the end. You can drift off whenever you're ready. Come, settle in beside the fire as I tell you of Lula the cat's lazy day, keeping the inhabitants of her hometown company. Though I can't imagine the pair would ever get along, Lula rather reminds me of Otto. She whiles away the day somewhere between sleep and wake, and is always ready to offer an ear, albeit a furry, disinterested one, to anyone who'd like to be heard. I've often wondered what adventures Otto is off on when I can't find him in the clearing, and what stories people might have told him knowing that their secret is safer with one such as him than it ever could be elsewhere. Before we begin, here's a quick word from our valued sponsors who make this free content possible. We made USAA insurance for veterans like James. When he found out how much USAA was helping members save, he said, It's time to switch. We'll help you find the right coverage at the right price. USAA. What you're made of, we're made for. Restrictions apply. Major phone carriers make you sign contracts with rigid data plans to trap you into a kind of forced phonogamy. Sounds pretty insecure if you ask me. At Consumer Cellular, we believe in a more consensual and healthy form of phonogamy, free of contracts and more flexible to your data needs. This way, you stick around not because we force you to with contracts and fees, but because you love our phone plans. Like ardently love our phone plans. Phonogamously. Consumer Cellular. When Freedom calls, we're here to answer. Call us at 1-888-FREEDOM. For the best way to fall asleep with Nightfalls, you can now become a premium supporter. Enjoy the entire back catalogue of Nightfalls classics, all with a rich, immersive and totally ad-free experience. If you love falling asleep to Nightfalls, Nightfalls Premium will elevate your sleep while helping to support myself and the team. We love creating Nightfalls, but without supporters, it wouldn't be possible. Join Nightfalls Premium today in just two tabs on both Apple Podcasts or via the Supercast link found in the show notes for all other podcast players. Your sleep will thank you for it, and so will I. Hello, Abby here. If you've got children and find bedtimes a struggle, I'd like to tell you about Coco Sleep, a children's story podcast designed to make bedtime a dream. Coco Sleep turns a chaotic bedtime into cosy bonding time. The stories are delivered in a pace that gently slows. Rumour has it that no one's ever heard an ending. So search Coco Sleep on your favourite podcast app and let's make bedtime a dream. That's K-O-K-O Sleep and I'll see you there. Before we settle in for tonight's tale... I invite you to take a moment to yourself to wind down and relax after another long day. Let's begin by releasing any remaining drags of energy still lingering in your body. Give your arms and legs a gentle shake Wriggle your fingers and toes and slowly rock your head from side to side. When you're feeling ready, let your head come to settle in a neutral position and allow your body to find stillness for perhaps the first time all day. Draw a deep breath in 
through your nose. Hold it for a moment. And as you exhale, know that this is your time. In a moment, I want to offer you a little space. All to yourself. To breathe into. To simply be in. As you drift from moment to moment. And allow your mind and body some time to slow down and settle into relaxation. When you're ready, draw a deep breath in through your nose. Hold it for a moment and sigh out through your mouth as you let go of the day. Drawing another long, lazy breath in. Feel a wave of deep relaxation wash through you as you begin to settle in for the night. Let your breath wash in and out. Safe in the knowledge that each cycle of it draws you nearer and nearer to the deep sleep you deserve. Now, if you're feeling ready, this evening's story can begin. Inside number 26 Lavender Lane, a cat called Lula stirred from her night's sleep. She stepped out of her basket and arched her back, giving it a satisfying stretch. Her ears pricked up as she listened for noises coming from the room above. The creak of a bed. Soft footsteps across a wooden floor. A pause as someone put on their dressing gown and slippers. The squeak of a bedroom door which needed oiling. The shuffling of familiar steps coming down the stairs. An elderly woman entered the living room where Lula was waiting for her. The woman's face lit up with joy as it did every morning when her eyes alighted on her best friend. Lula padded over to the woman and was pulled into her embrace. They had been friends ever since the cat was a playful kitten. They'd shared many secrets over the years and many cuddles. And now, no words were needed as the old woman took Lula into the kitchen and made breakfast for them both. After being fed, Lula climbed onto the lap of the woman who was now sitting in a wooden chair, gently rocking back and forth. They had their morning cuddle, which made Lula purr in delight. All too soon, the cuddle was over. They both had a busy day ahead of them. The woman had many friends to visit that day, and so did Lula. After giving Lula a fond goodbye, the woman left by the front door. Lula left via the cat flap in the back door. Lula's whiskers twitched as she decided who to call on first. Ah, yes, the young man next door would be awake. He would greatly appreciate her company. She headed to the young man's front door and let out a series of meows 
to let him know she was there. The door soon opened, and the man beamed down at Lula, as if he couldn't believe his luck. Lifting her chin, the cat stalked into his house and headed up the stairs into the rear bedroom, which held the young man's fitness equipment. It wasn't the first time she'd called on him so early in the morning, and she knew his routine. The man bounded up the steps after Lula and started chatting about something or other. He was such a chatterbox in the mornings and had far too much energy. Despite that, Lula did like him. As expected, the young man began his exercise routine. The cat kept him company as he performed his yoga stretches. On and on he chattered as he went through one stretching pose after another. After a few minutes, Lula jumped onto the windowsill. She was still listening to the young man, but she wanted to see what was going on out in the street. A soothing sound came to her. She turned her head and saw the young man on that running machine of his. His feet sounded like a quietly beating drum, and the running machine made a delightful swishing sound. Lula yawned and stretched out on the windowsill. The comforting beat of the man's feet and the continuous hum of the machine sounded like a soft lullaby. As the man's feet grew weary, the tempo slowed to a steady beat. Within a minute, Lula was fast asleep. Lula woke from her nap a short while later to find the young man dressed in a smart suit. He talked some more as they walked down the stairs and out of his house. He gave Lula a cheery wave before heading to the bus stop. Lula decided to visit the old man at number 30 next. He didn't talk as much as the young man, and she knew he was always delighted to see her. The sun shone brightly as she padded into the old man's overgrown front garden. There had been a time when his garden had been the neatest and tidiest on Lavender Lane. But that time had gone. Now the front garden looked more like a wild meadow than a manicured lawn. Lula much preferred the wild look. She found the old man reclining in a deck chair in the wilderness of his back garden. He raised his hand in greeting, but didn't get up from his seated position. Lula gave him a brief look before heading into the long grass. The grass brushed pleasantly over her body as she walked towards her favourite part of the garden. Bumblebees droned overhead and a butterfly flew perilously close. Lula made a tired attempt at swatting the creature but her heart wasn't in it. The day was too warm for anything too energetic. Lula reached the apple tree at the bottom of the garden 
and settled herself in the shade of the long grass which surrounded the trunk of the tree. Bees buzzed here and there. Leaves on the trees rustled in a warm breeze. The long grass swished and swayed around the cat. The aroma from a nearby lavender plant scented the air. A quiet orchestra of garden sounds settled over Lula like a light lace blanket. Within a minute, she was asleep. The sun had passed over the bottom part of the garden by the time Lula opened her eyes. She had a good stretch before walking back to the old man in his deck chair. A rumble of snores came from him. He looked so peaceful in his slumber. Lula took one last look at the lovely wilderness before heading for a gap in the fence. There were gaps in many fences on Lavender Lane, and she knew them all. Lula headed through the nearest gap and traveled through back gardens. The residents who were home looked immensely pleased to see Lula, and some waved enthusiastically at her. Lula didn't have time to visit them all, but a soft mew in the next garden pulled her off course. The young woman in this house had her own furry friend, and Lula was warming to the new kitten the more she bumped into her. Lula slunk into the next garden to see a flicking tail disappearing through the cat flap. Then she lazily followed suit, stretching her legs as she stepped into the warmth of the house. Charlie, the kitten, was sitting on the rug waiting for her with a little ping-pong ball at his foot. The two cats were up cheeks in hello and Lula rolled over on the carpet she batted the ball with her paw whilst Charlie pounced backwards and forwards chasing the ball as it bounced off the cabinet and skidding on the tiles to trap it it was a joyful sight that made Lula sleepy to watch The little tabby slid this way and that, pitter-pattering over the flooring in pursuit of the ping-pong ball, until his steps began to slow. Before long, Charlie yawned and flopped down at Lula's side. She gave him a fond smile and tiptoed out of the cat flap leaving him snoozing on the rug. It was perfect timing. Lula had someone special to see, and she was just in time too. Lula reached the gate of number 38 at the same time as the man who lived there arrived. He was a postman, and had finished work for the day. He was ready for a good sit down. A ready smile came to his face when he saw Lula waiting for him. He scooped Lula into his big arms and gently tickled her behind her ear. He smelled of sunshine and fresh air. He took Lula into his small, cozy house and gave her a welcoming drink of cool water. The man moved around the kitchen as he prepared a meal for himself. 
He hummed cheerfully as he did so. Lila jumped onto a wooden kitchen chair and watched the postman. He was always so happy. The postman joined her at the table. As he ate his lunch, he told her about his morning and all the houses he'd been to. His voice was deep, and his laugh was like a soft melody. Rays of sunshine came through the window, making the kitchen warm. As the postman continued talking, Lula curled into a comfy position on the chair. The low tone of the postman's words lulled her to sleep. The echoing noise of snores woke her a short while later. The postman was no longer sitting near her. The only evidence of him having been there was his empty plate on the table. Lula stretched out her legs before jumping off the chair and following the noise of snores. She went into the living room and saw the postman fast asleep in an armchair. She climbed onto the windowsill and checked the world outside. The sun had moved lower in the sky. The day was getting on. She still had things to do. Lula climbed onto the postman's knees, causing him to come out of his nap. With a meow, she let him know she was leaving. Lula ran lightly from the room and out of the kitchen door, which was ajar. There was more activity on Lavender Lane now, and Lula had to go into her favorite hiding places now and again to avoid being picked up and cuddled by one of the many admiring residents who loved her. Using the gaps in fences again, Lula stealthily made her way towards number 46 and to the front door. She crouched behind a large flower pot and waited for the family to arrive. Very soon, two pairs of little feet, which belonged to the children of the family, ran along the path and stopped at the front door. The children jigged from side to side, as if they couldn't help but dance about. Lula observed everything, but didn't move so much as a whisker. She had to bide her time. Larger feet came walking down the path. It was the mother. She didn't walk with as much energy as her children. She talked to the little ones, causing their dancing feet to become still. The front door of the house was opened. Once the children had gone inside, the mother lowered herself and looked at Lula. The mother smiled and indicated for Lula to go inside. With her tail pointing to the sky, Lula trotted into the house without giving the mother a single glance. As soon as the children saw the cat, they let out delighted gasps and ran towards her. Lula sat down and lifted her head regally. She allowed the children to gently stroke her soft fur with their little hands. They gazed into her hazel eyes, 
as if she was the most magnificent creature they had ever seen. Lula didn't like most children, but these two were okay. They always smelled of joy and excitement, and their carefree laughter made her feline heart feel light. The mother handed each child a piece of string, which had a colorful piece of paper tied at the bottom of it. She spoke sternly to the children before sitting on the sofa. Lula played the string game with the chuckling children for a little while. She swatted the dangling paper expertly many times before becoming bored of the game. When Lula decided the game was over, she jumped onto the woman's lap and settled down on it. The woman didn't mind. Family sounds filled the room as the children chatted incessantly to each other. Their mother joined in with their conversation, her voice soft and full of love. The sound of voices made Lula feel happy and warm inside. Her eyes soon closed and she went into the land of Nod again. When Lula woke up, she was no longer on the woman's lap. She had been placed on a velvet cushion in the corner of the sofa. It was so comfy that Lula was tempted to stay a little longer. But one look at the darkening sky outside the window told her it was time to move on. Lula heard noises coming from the kitchen and went that way to find the family sitting at the kitchen table. Lula leaned against the mother's legs until the mother stood up and opened the kitchen door. Lula didn't give the family another look as she left the house. She would see them again soon. Once she was back on Lavender Lane, Lula walked back the way she'd come. Street lamps came on as she passed beneath them. Lula stopped at number 32. A small car pulled up and a young woman got out. She broke into a big grin when she saw Lula. She picked her up and pulled Lula close to her chest. Lula could sense the tiredness on the young woman and rubbed her furry face against the woman's smooth cheek. They went inside number 32, still holding the cat. The young woman dropped her handbag on the floor and then shrugged off her coat. She talked softly to Lula about how busy her day had been. Her voice was very weary, which made Lula feel the need to rest her head against the woman's shoulder. They went into the kitchen. The woman turned the light on first before switching the radio on. A cheerful tune came out, which made the woman laugh. She started to sing in a soothing tone. She slowly danced around the kitchen with Lula in her arms. The cat felt the joy rising in the young woman. Lilla was placed on a soft rug on the floor. She watched the young woman move around the kitchen as she prepared the evening's meal. 
the sound of the woman singing was light and carefree, like a sweet serenade. Lula felt her eyes beginning to close. She forced them open. It wasn't time for her big sleep yet. But she couldn't leave the young woman alone until someone else came home. That someone else was the woman's husband, and he came into the kitchen a few minutes later. He gave his wife a loving smile before turning his smile on Lula. The man took his wife in his arms and twirled her around the kitchen. They laughed and sang happily to each other. It was a heartwarming sight which was a joy to witness. But Lula had stayed long enough. She extended a paw and caught the man's leg as he came closer. She gave him a look which he immediately understood because he opened the kitchen door. Lula left the couple behind without a backward glance. The moon cast its light over the houses on Lavender Lane as Lula headed home to number 26. The old woman was waiting in the kitchen for her and was already in her night clothes. A light meal had been prepared for them both. Lula gave the meal her full attention as she ate. Her endeavors of the day had made her hungry. After their meals, the old woman and the cat moved into the living room. There was a slight chill in the air now, so the woman lit the fire, sending a comforting glow of light around the room. The friends sat next to each other on the sofa. The old woman put her glasses on and started to read a book and Lula gazed into the dancing flames of the fire. Lula's eyes grew heavy, but she didn't allow herself to fall asleep. Not yet. A yawn came from the old woman. She placed her book on the table at the side of the sofa, took her glasses off, and rubbed her tired eyes. She gave Lula a loving cuddle before standing up. She extinguished the fire and then moved towards the stairs. Lula had one last thing to do before the day was over. She climbed onto the windowsill and looked out at Lavender Lane. Lights were slowly being extinguished in the homes of her extended family. Everyone was settling down for the night. Lula moved off the windowsill and curled up in the cat basket next to the sofa. The basket was lined with a fluffy blanket, which the old woman had knitted, and the fragrance which came from the blanket was full of comfort and love. Lila's ears pricked up as she listened to the noises coming from the room above. Those nighttime noises were her favorite lullaby the squeak of a door which needed oiling. A pause as the old woman took off her dressing gown and slippers. Soft footsteps across a wooden floor. The creak 
of a bed. The sounds were the lullaby of home. Lula closed her eyes and drifted off into a peaceful sleep.